Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 4th of July 2011. The day is a day of firework displays, parades, parties, music. Yes, it's my wife's birthday. Happy birthday, dear. Nice of all these Americans to put on such a show for you. Today's trivia question is what calamitous event was observed on this day in the year 1054, even though it had started nearly 6,500 years before that? The answer will be given at the end. Let's take a look at the GOES X-ray plot and let's see what's been happening as far as flares are concerned. We've actually had a real sea flare. That occurred while I was making the video yesterday. But the sun seems to be at it again. After a short period of producing minor B flares and this one C flare, it's gone quiet again. Just because you're paranoid, it doesn't mean they aren't out to get you. So we'll have to look at the sunspot regions to find out why this is happening. Our three numbered active regions are still there. Region 1242 has shown a little bit of growth but is right on the west limb, so will be gone by tomorrow. Region 1244 has continued to grow and is now about the same size and intensity as Region 1243, and it is the one that seems to be producing most of the activity. There is a hint of some bright plage coming over the southeast limb, but I can't see any sunspots there as yet. So let's take a look at these regions using the sunspot and magnetic movies from the HMI instrument on SDO. Over the 48 hours you can clearly see the rapid development of Region 1244. In the magnetic movie, I'd like you to concentrate on this area here. It is a region of new magnetic flux, trailing region 1243. While there are no spots there now, there seems to be some signs of significant growth. I'm going to go ahead on a limb here and suggest that in the next few days, we might see the emergence of some spots there. Next, let's turn to the transition region and corona. First, the transition region at about 50,000 degrees shows the major eruptions of filaments and prominences. And you can see off the northeast limb, there is actually rather a nice uh, prominence that erupts. However, Helio Viewer doesn't seem to be working this morning, so I can't show you a nice blow up of it. The low temperature corona at about 600,000 degrees shows this new region coming over the southeast limb. However, the higher temperature 2 million degree corona shows that this region is not a particularly strong region and is unlikely to produce major flares unless there's some significant growth in it in the coming days. Finally, we turn to the outer corona and look at the data from the SOHO coronagraphs. First the C2 coronagraph, then the C3 coronagraph with the larger field of view. In the C2 coronagraph, you can clearly see the eruption off of the northeast limb. But because the data is running a few hours behind real time, we don't yet see it emerging very strongly in the larger field of view uh, instrument. The ACE instruments show us what's going on in the solar wind, and we see that the temperature, speed, and density of the solar wind hasn't changed much since yesterday. NOAA 15 indicates that the auroral zones both at the northern pole and the southern pole are relatively inactive. And we see that the KP index has been varying between 1 and 2. So in summary then, the X-ray background is at B1, the sunspot number has fallen to 42, Radio sun intensity is at 86 solar flux units as it was yesterday. Solar wind speed has dropped to 370 kilometers per second with a slightly lower density of two protons per cubic centimeter. And geospace conditions are rated as quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that we have a chance of C flares, but a very low chance of M and X flares. The sunspot number will remain low. Chance of getting coronal mass ejections is very good. The solar wind speed will remain low, and we have a low probability of getting a major geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours. Although spaceweather.com is predicting that we may get a uh, storm in a couple of days, NOAA is not making such a prediction, and my tendency would be to go with NOAA rather than spaceweather.com. From the composite coronal image, we can see that there is not very much coming over the east limb in the next few days and our brighter regions will now be passing over the west limb shortly. So we are, I think, in for a relatively quiet few days to come. The answer to the trivia question I set at the beginning, what was the calamitous event that occurred 957 years ago, was the formation of the Crab Nebula. Chinese and Arab astronomers noticed a new star appear in the constellation of Taurus. And when you turn your telescopes on that spot today, you see the Crab Nebula. It occurred 6,500 years before that because that's the distance to the Crab Nebula from Earth. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.